Hi everybody, this, this is a tour as well. With a ridiculous title to try and fit in the conference um, theme. Um, so this is a talk about RabbitMQ um, and AMQP message queuing um, and some of the software that I've built around this. Um, so I've been playing with this for about six months now or so. Um, so I, I gave a very early version of this talk um, where, when I kind of not really written any software and certainly so hadn't written any software that actually worked. Um, uh, so I have a Um Yeah. Sorry about this. <laughs> this time, second time around, I have actually written the software I'm talking about, um, uh, which, which is a massive improvement. Um, yeah, it, it does work. Um, I am using it in production. Um, it's definitely half of it is called for other people to use. Um, a lot of the shine features that I'm going to kind of demonstrate are fairly new, um, but this should hopefully be interesting. Um, Okay, so so very quick now, I'm assuming that most of the people here went to my previous talk or, or you know enough already about that you know, that, that was worth it. So um, if you don't know anything, uh, tough. Um, right, quick recap um, on the MQP concepts. You've got um, one of the well, zero or more publishers who are publishing messages, they publish messages to named exchanges. Um, those exchanges can be bound to zero or more message queues. Um, and every message to every exchange goes to every queue that is bound to that exchange, um, and every message to every queue goes to exactly one conversation. <coughs> um, so, um, all your clients, the, the way this works is that um, your publisher says, I would like to declare an exchange called so and so, and then they start pushing messages for it. And the consumer says, I would like to declare an exchange called so and so. And I would like to declare a queue, and I'd like to bind A to B, and etc. So kind of all the wiring and how your messages flow through the system is determined by your clients. Um, and they can specify various options, such as durability, as in if messages get saved to disk, um, etc. Um, so this is all kind of nice and fairly simple. Um, and AMQP also has a routing key, um, which is basically just a string that every single message that you send gets tagged with. Um, and so when you're attaching queues to exchanges, you say that I would like to attach this queue to this exchange, matching messages with this routine um, only. Um, and you can bind one queue to an exchange multiple times, or you can bind a queue to multiple exchanges, etc. Which means that you, you can make a queue and subscribe to things that I like got meat and things that I like got beer, but you can ignore them all, ignore all messages, um, which are the things that I like got classical music. Um, there are wild cards, so you, you can put these in and you know, have everything that is tagged things that I like. Um, you could have everything tagged things that I like and just things that I hate classical music, etc. You, you can be really, really flexible with this. Um, AMQP also has um, two different delivery modes. Um, there's one way your client says, I would like to get a message from AQ, please. And so you get one message. Or you can say, I would like to just consume messages from the queue, and the queue just sprays messages at you until you say, whoa, whoa, stop. Um, very briefly mentioned durability. Again, um, you can have explicit acknowledgement. Um, so you can take the message off the queue and do something with it, and if you crash and you haven't acknowledged it, then the server will put that message back on the queue, um, which can be useful. Um, and yes, so, so with routing keys, with multiple binding, etc., you can do really, really flexible things. Um, the routing can be dynamic. So, so you can change how the messages are routed to the thing that you're listening to in flight live or while you're already listening to it. Um, which is kind of, it's got some pretty interesting applications um, that I'll show you in a minute. Um, you can also get custom pl pluggable message exchanges. Um, the most useful example being um, that you can have an exchange that keeps the last message that was sent to it, and then whenever a new client connects, he gets the last message that came down this queue. Um, which is really useful if you have an application um, that you know, is pushing updates out to message queue, message queuing, um, and say every 30 seconds you save the application state and push that somewhere else in message queuing, it means that any client who wants to, ca wants to catch up can get the current state and then start receiving updates. Um, right, so 
there's loads of really cool, quite interesting things you can do with RabbitMQ um, and MQP. Um, so I wanted to play with it, um, uh, but there wasn't really a Perl client, um, and then something there was. Someone, someone shoved on GitHub, um, and I played with it and patched a bit and made it work. Um, and it's written with any event, and I hadn't used that before, I hadn't done any asynchronous programming for ages, um, I hadn't done any event-based programming for ages, and certainly never in Perl, um, only in C. Um, so I, I started writing some simple things. Um, so, so the simplest application I could possibly think of was logging into MessageGuru. Um, so either I am going to um, log things from my web applications, or possibly I'm just going to actually tail log files that are written out on the file system, and every line I'm going to send to message queuing, uh, and then you know, I want to do something with that. Um, so we're sending all these um, log messages into the message queue, um, and we want to get them back. So that's what the code kind of looks like for the thing that just listens to a queue and just sprays all the messages to the screen. So it's dead easy. Dead easy. You just say, I want to consume messages, and your code gets called every single time. Um, OK, so there's some setup. You have to make a connection. Um, and then this is all the wiring. Um, so you say, I want to make an exchange, and I want to make a queue, and I want to bind them together, and etc. cetera. Um, so it's kind of pretty simple. You, you can then you've got all these messages being logged into message queuing from all of your web servers. You, you want to dump them into a file central point, except it's better <coughs> than that. Um, because really you want to, be able to rotate these log files, and you don't want to you want to make sure that these messages actually get to disk if your machine crashes, but you don't want to call sync every line, because otherwise your machine will start sinking. Um, so yeah, even, even doing things like just writing lines out on disk from message queuing isn't very easy, but fairly easy. Um, another interesting thing, or I think it could be interesting, is, is viewing the messages live. Um, so, you know, see what's actually happening in all your web logs. You know, every, you must have had um, 10 terminals open, all running tail, all on 10 different web servers to try and work out what's going on. Um, but why well, don't you just have one? Um, and, and, right, so I thought this is a great idea. <coughs> Someone wrote this AMQP client in Flash. Um, they're insane, clearly. Um, but I went, right, I can use this, and, and, and I can make this nice prototype um, to, to view web logs and do stuff with web logs live um, in my browser. This will be pretty cool. Um, and, and so I decked around with this for a bit and got it kind of working and realized this wasn't actually all that useful. Um, but yeah, it kind of looked like that, and it was kind of cute. Um, and you know, this is one of the first things I kicked together about six months ago or so. Um, Right, so, so we've talked about kind of public subscribe and broadcast, and, and you know, this is my use case here. Um, let's talk about um, actually queuing jobs. Um, so, so let's start with scripts. If I want a script that I run, or the traditional way, the very traditional way of doing things, is to write a script that does some stuff, and you put that script in the cron tab and you run it once an hour or whatever. Um, so, um, and you write a you use get opt and you write some help and, and etc. Um, but these days, we like classes. Um, so, the way I've been writing all my scripts for quite a while now is to use moosex get opt, which turns a class into a script. Um, and I just make a load of these classes that have a run method. And you specify all, kind of all the data that you need to receive to run this job uh, or to run this script as command line options, it just moves attributes. And so it can be used as a script. But then if you, use, you have an instance of a class, and you built it into this class, and you just call the run method. So if you add music storage to this class, you can then build an instance of this class, turn it into JSON, send it somewhere else, inflate it back into a Perl class, call the run method, and suddenly you're executing your job on a remote machine. Okay, very easy. And of course, when you want to debug this and work out what the bloody hell went on, you can just run the script command line options. Um, and you, you don't have to run it in any kind of special thing. So I thought this was kind of neat. Um, but I suppose, well, so I, I'm, I'm going to now have several scripts, you know, tens um, at least, um, all doing bits of queuing, um, or all doing various sorted bits. So I'm pulling messages <coughs> off, I'm in queuing messages, I'm running jobs, etc. Um, <coughs> I'm explaining all my boards in here, and actually I want to aggregate them. I want to know how many requests in an hour, how many requests I did per site per hour, how many 
memcache it, so I did all sorts of things, and I want to get these aggregates, and I want to push them somewhere. Um, which means I push more stuff into message queuing, and I then receive aggregates, and I aggregate the aggregates, and, and you end up doing a lot of stuff. And, and so I suddenly realized that I was very quickly going to have 50 different scripts, all of which used the message queuing talk to library, but, but all of which were 50 different scripts. Um, appearing in Crontab, I had to manage 50 different scripts. Uh, it was just going to be a nightmare. Um, I wasn't going there. I needed something much more generic to make this much more manageable for me. Um, so, yeah, framework, I, the word framework, and I'm going to go, but, um, yeah, so my actual most urgent problem, I, I need something to run jobs. Um, so, yeah, I wrote some really simple fraction code, um, did my script thing, I just did running, kind of yuck, but, but it, yeah, it's fine, it's working. Um, except <coughs> one of your scripts starts misbehaving. Um, and is it the script misbehaving, or is it the message queuing bit misbehaving, or is it, well, you've got this black box that's basically running a while one loop. While there is a message, do some stuff on the message. And so you don't get any status back to it. You don't know how many times it's executed. Okay, so you can add some logging code in there, but then you, you've got another log file that you need to send. And, and so you've just created more problems. Um, okay. But, okay, hang on a second. Each thing, you know, I Timers that are firing events, listeners that are pulling messages off, loggers, things that are emitting messages, things that are working on messages, etc. Is an instance of class, uh, and all the state needed is in those attributes. And so I have music storage, and so I can just serialize them. So actually, the state, the job server, or whatever script, just becomes serialized the things running it and send it the message here. <coughs> you can then aggregate and, and you do all the other cool things you know, you're doing. Um, so actually, just get one process that builds all the things that you want to run and kind of runs them all at once. But the fact, you've then got one <coughs> process that's doing 50 things and, and it double one possible to manage and work out what it's doing when it crashes. Um, yeah, not cool. Um, so, 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 <coughs> right, okay. Um, make plus make plus storage. And there's a little thing called Catalyst that, that I've used once or twice. Um, and it makes instances of things from config files. Um, and in fact, I can poke Catalyst a bit and make it build an application from the config at startup time. <laughs> and I can write two controllers, um, one of which is list all the things that you have, uh, and the other one of which is inspect the thing. Oh, and suddenly my process has a web front end, and I can point my browser at it and get JSON out about what it's doing, about what its internal state is. Um, and uh, I mean, this makes it a shitload easier to debug, um, and it's monitoring the thing, working out what it's doing, drawing graphs, having Nagios alerts, all these other good things on production, suddenly becomes trivial. Uh, and I mean, really, really trivial. That is the entirety of you know, There's one function, get JSON from your URL, that I haven't shown, but that it is the entire monitoring for one of my job server instances um, that draws graphs. Because it introspects what are you running and then goes through and gets the status and to the graphs. Um, so, so for every server that I deploy message queuing onto, I make one sync uh, and I suddenly have all the graphs. Brilliant. Um, okay, so, so this is massive hubris. I, I appreciate this. Um, I could have just use Gearman or you know, any of the several thousand other solutions to, to write my jobs. I'm sure I could have come up with a simple or simpler pre-baked logging aggregation solution. I was having fun though, I was playing with new things. Um, it was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> was having fun. <laughs> uh, past tense. Um, yeah. not a very good programmer. I'm certainly not a great systems programmer. Um, and async is kind of brings its own level of harm. And then pluggable async. And, and yeah, can any of you say race condition? Or just, oh. Um, yeah, so I learned quite a lot of stuff. Um, it doesn't crash anymore. It doesn't leak file descriptors. In fact, it's generally well behaved. Um, mostly because I'm really sick of waking up at 4 a.m. 
Um, no, they're really, really sick. Um, so so I, I gradually fixed the bloody thing. Um, and uh, I was pretty tempted to throw it away, actually, and, and just do something something someone else wrote, uh, written. Um, why Linus didn't win? Well, Gearman. Um, yeah, Gearman and a lot of the other things came out of are all great, as long as you're like them. Um, I, 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 I did this really hard, because I run a large Mobile FS installation. And Mobile FS is great, shares really fast them, cheap as chips, um, fantastic, until you start putting um, 100 gig videos in it. Which, you know, live journal was storing 3 meg photos max. 100 gig video, not so cool. Um, and, and, yeah, I, I just didn't want to go there. And I was very excited, and, and I had to write a talk for a conference, um, which is always a good excuse um, to avoid writing a talk for a conference by writing software instead. Um, and, and I found this cool thing called Hippie, um, specifically Web Hippie. Um, so everybody knows Web 2.0, um, and so that's lots and lots of JavaScript. Oh, um, which is all updated in Pages family. Um, so I've got all these messages and stuff flying around that are already JSON, that are already generated by music storage, and I want all of these lazy updates. So I want, yeah, comments, long poll, whatever you want to call it. Um, the actual technique is multi-part um, XML HTTP requests. So you can make one edge update <coughs> and keep it open and keep getting data, um, you know, in, in chunks. Um, and juice, if, if you're using most stuff and have most classes flying about, have a look at juice. Um, uh, the main selling point is it has this thing called juice.storage, um, which means that you can have your Perl class turn it into JSON, send it to some JavaScript, turn it into a JavaScript object, and you can write methods on that JavaScript object that do things like you know, paint yourself. You know, so you write a JavaScript paint yourself message, and then all your Perl things you can spray and have that out in JavaScript. And I'm really quite nice. Um, other than the fact that, yeah, Doing any of this stuff involved dicking around with cross browser stuff, which Hippie takes away. It, 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 it's the JavaScript part and the server side part of having this long port pipe so that you don't have to think about it, which is really good because um, I you know, hate thinking about it. So. Um, right, so <laughs> some nice Okay, so, so um, yeah, all the nasty Ajax goes away. Um, and in fact, if you've got a crappy old browser, it will do one poll for you. If you've got a fairly more, well, Vaguely current browser, um, it'll do multi-part XML HTTP request. If you've got a really shiny new browser um, or Safari, um, then it'll upgrade to web sockets. Um, so, so whatever the best technology is, it'll just use. Um, and right, so let's think of if we've got this cheap pipe to send stuff at the browser and it's got a persistent connection, what can we do with that? Well, log tailing and interactive log tailing, um, real-time systems graphs. You have all these pretty graphs that are updating themselves. Etc. Um, instant feedback from monitoring batch jobs. In fact, you can get your batch job to, to you know, be emitting log messages like, I'm 50% complete, I think I have another hour left to run, or whatever. Um, social features. So, so you know, you've got e commerce sites and people are browsing around and buying things. Um, and, and with that, see the, get the last message pushed to the exchange thing, you can have, you know, Three other people are browsing this page. You know, features like that become suddenly really cheap to implement because you don't have to write to the database form. Um, okay, so so let's go back to jobs because um, these are nice to case thing. So um, we inflate JSON into an instance, and we're going to just call the run method. I mean, this is how all my scripts work, etc. So what I do is is I pass in a status callback to the run method. Um, and then the job calls the status callback and passes it a class. So I call my class, class completion estimates and I'm 50% complete. Um, and so this completion estimate class, you can guess the punchline here already, um, it uses music storage and can be flattened into JSON. Um, so, okay, so if I say all jobs have a unique UUID, uh, a unique ID that you can refer to this instance of this job running right now. Um, and if I define some, some common job statuses, like I'm running, I'm finished, um, here's a textual status line, here's a completion estimate, um, and here's the fact that I just run another job. Because quite often what you have 
Um, it's a situation where you know, a client uploads a spreadsheet or something, so you have to then go and parse the spreadsheet and then kind of extract little lines out of it. You then have to go and do something for each line, and maybe that um, entails more work, etc. I, I mean, to think about that specific example that my company does, um, we we deal with music, so we send music to around the world to you know iTunes and Napster, etc. So a client will submit a spreadsheet saying, I would like this album or these 10,000 albums to go to this selection of iTunes, Napster, etc. Um, so we parse this spreadsheet and we then have to do some work to actually log that they've done all that in the system, um, that all they want all this done in the system. We then have to go and generate a load of MP3s or AACs, etc. When these MP3s and AACs are all generated, we then need to get a, uh, you know, a subset of this content, and that's for 10,000 things. You know, maybe I want to get 200, stuff them all in a directory, build some XML files, I need to FTP this stuff to iTunes, and it, so I have all these cascading things. You know, I, I finished doing some transforming, I now need to build some stuff on a disk, I finished building some stuff on a disk, I need to FTP it somewhere, and I've FTP it somewhere, and I need to delete it again. Um, so, so jobs completing, uh, being Quite often it implies that you're now going to run a second phase or you know, third phase, etc. Um, okay, so um, what I can do is I can write a web page or a web URI where you say, I'm interested in these UIDs. Give me a pipe that just gives me the JavaScript JSON updates for these. And so I can draw these cute little progress indicators. Um, I take all these status texts and you know overlay them, etc. Um, I can have further jobs. So, so when a job that's running kicks up another job, I can tell the client about that, and he can subscribe to the updates from the next job, um, etc. Um, and custom statuses, yeah, for, for well for the user of my software, that's fairly easy. I mean, you just make another class, you call it what you want, you make sure it can serialize with JSON, and you write a JavaScript class, and you make sure it has hate yourself method and you're kind of done. Um, so you don't actually have to write very much code. Um, however, I have more than one machine which are running jobs. Um, they're, they're running different sets of jobs on different sets of machines. Um, really don't want the unwashed masses making HTTP requests into arbitrary parts of my infrastructure. Um, and if I have five servers doing this type of job, how the bloody hell does the user know what server it's actually executing on. Um, so, well, actually, why talk to the server that's running the job to get this HTTP stuff? Why not just spray all of these status updates back into message queuing, and a different web server can pull them off of message queuing and send them to the client? Um, so, yeah, I use Hippie, um, part of Hippie's controller, uh, the client produces a set of keys. Um, I then mangle those into what routing keys you're interested in, um, and you then get a pipe, um, <coughs> and you get your web browser gets a queue that receives all the things that you're interested in. Um, and whenever a run job message gets seen, um, you sort of job that you know, you're interested in, in a job, it says status update run job, you automatically connect and subscribe to the UID of a job that you just run. Um, it, even though that job's you know, in a queue somewhere and might not ever run or might not run in the next half hour, your client is still doing <coughs> to listen to what it's going to do. Um, so I guess we should have a diagram because like, it's kind of getting complicated. Um, okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll step through this. Uh, the, arrows, the arrows here um, are kind of message flow, they're not. They're not which direction the TCP connection is or anything else. So, so the user does something. Um, that goes for a web proxy, um, which sends it to, to my Catalyst application server. Um, the Catalyst application server does some work to generate a page, um, builds a page, sends a page back to the user. Um, the application server also kicks off or enqueues a load of messages or one or more messages in the message queue. I think our job server, and as it can, that dequeues these messages, um, inflates them, calls the run method. Um, or, no, it's more complicated than this, because um, the job server may have set of work processes that they're actually doing the work. So actually, it unqueues this message, 
It then sends it down to one of its worker processes, which then runs it. The worker process um, pipes status reports back up. Uh, the job server then pushes those status reports back into the message queue. Um, and a client, by this time, has made a second request to this um, MQ gateway thing, which is running my, my hippies. Um, this, yeah, this will then dequeue all of these status updates and the client gets them. Um, so we basically have one post request and then one TCP connection that, that gets updates on all the stuff that happens and gets triggered um, after that point. Um, Claire is not right. Good. Excellent. Um, okay, so so I, I'm talking about this. Is it usable? Yes. Yes, it now is. It didn't used to be. Um, but yeah, so, so I'm, no, I'm, I'm using this in production. I have been using it in production for six months. Um, it, it did stop waking me up in the night about two months ago. Um, all of the status pipe stuff, it all works, it's all there. I'm using it quite a lot internally. Um, I haven't quite pushed this out to clients yet. Um, if you need something really simple that, that is no working, um, stick with the MAC. Um, well, it's, it's been about for you know six years, eight years. Um, whereas my stuff has been about for six months. So, so you know that does imply something. Um, so, who wants to see that? Hooray! <laughs> Didn't ask who <me> doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I am half smart, mate. <laughs> Uh, right, this one. Okay, so I have an instance of RabbitMQ running. It's not very interesting, but just a note. Um, okay. So I bring this across. Can everybody see that? I'll make it bigger. Okay. Just like that, we can that right. So, um, I have a capitalist up here. So I can run in the above mode and start up like a normal capitalist app. Um, so, yeah, here are all the things it supports. Um, and where are my slides? Because I have some notes. Hooray. There. Excellent. Um, so, so, this is a really simple instance of job server. Um, like you can see, I've got it set up for a test scenario, so, so as soon as you start it, it just queues 10 jobs and then proceeds to process them. Uh, I've only got one worker process running, so it's going to kind of do that quite slowly. Um, so let's go and have a look at that. So, and we go backwards one, here we are. Right, so I have a component map, and that's what's in the application. Uh, I mean, that's the thing we saw that um, running script looking at before. I have a message queue model that, that deals with actually connecting the message queue, and have one full job runner. Uh, I, I mean, I can have multiple job runners uh, within this one process, being managed by this one process, maintaining multiple work queues, or doing different things if I want to. But yeah, this is the simple case. So, right, here we go. It's not suspended. It's running one job. It started at then. Um, there's a one worker which started then, let's try this, it's going to work on this job. Um, here's the stuff that got passed into the job. Um, and yeah, so one job registered, one worker. Kind of done. Uh, I mean, it, this deliberately is simple example. Um, and so I'll very quickly show you the config for that. Um, most of which is commented out. Um, so yeah, there we go. We've got. Um, Four job runner, send the test jobs, one worker, three, same thing, two name, blah, blah, blah. Okay, um, a less simple example. My, what I'm going to say here is I want this job runner to um, serialize its status out of message queuing so that things that want to monitor it via message queuing can do so. Um, so the JSON that we looked at before, uh, this 
it's basically sprayed into the message queue um, once every 10 seconds. Excellent. Um, so, let's see that then. Uh, yeah. There we go. That's it being that's what I'm doing now. Um, and so the other thing that I turned on, um, so, so you've got publish self, we've got jobs by UID, which has a little bit of handling around assuming that all your jobs have UIDs, uh, that means you can do a chunk of cool stuff. So if I reload this, then I should get a chunk of cool stuff. Here we go. So yeah, that's the web page, but it's got this background um, HTTP request, which is getting JSON packets, and, and these lumps of JSON that are updating various bits of the display, um, which is kind of nice. Um, so I can make this a little bit more interesting <coughs> by doing that, and oops, I restart this. When it started, three. <coughs> multiple dots running once. There we go. Thrilling. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, right, demo three. Let's get a bit more. <coughs> uh, Exchange and queues more jobs. Um, so this automatically sends all the job update statuses back into message queuing, so that I can have two different servers which are looking at each other thing I was talking about before, um, and queues more jobs, um, clues it that um, I have jobs that want to run jobs and add some extra handling for that stuff. So I come back here. Right, so I'm going no, that's the wrong one. Right, so now we're on a second instance of this server on a slightly different port. Um, and I'm going to rerun the first instance with a new config. Great. Right. And so right, back here and got this. Exactly the same thing as before. This is the second server <coughs> that we started. This isn't running any jobs. This is just listening to message string for status updates and publishing them. Um, and hopefully in a minute, when that will be No, that's enough. All right, I have a display bug clearly. One, one of these, hopefully, when it finishes, should cause another job to get queued. Uh, no, in fact, it's already doing this. Yeah, so these 50% of the time, when this job finishes, it then immediately queues another job, and, and that causes this client to subscribe to the statuses coming from the next job, and so yeah, yeah chunk of jobs that come down the stream. Um, and yeah, I know my HTML is ugly, um, I, I have other people to do this, um, but this is just the stuff that shifts with the distribution. Um, I know mean, obviously for my real deployment, um, the HTML that this, this is wrapped in I'm serving from a different app server and I've got someone with the CSX. Um, anyway, so that's all working pretty nicely. Um, okay, uh, so there we go. Uh, I will come back. <coughs> so hopefully that might, might so we've just seen this entire thing. My, my second instance we're just looking at this. Um, the first one I started is, is that one. Um, and so we've got this, I haven't got a proxy in the middle, uh, I haven't got an actual app server because the actual page is just serving some HTML to wrap the JavaScript in from this. 
Um, but that basically just demonstrated yeah, the entire system. Um, okay, so for that, for that, for that, uh, for that. Um, okay, so the next steps. Um, if the message key goes away at the moment, it kind of dies. Um, the actual login from the job server goes to console, um, which is kind of useless. Um, docs would be really nice. Um, I like documentation. <laughs> I just don't like Um It would be nice to have bidirectional pipes so that your client could say, I would like to run a job, please, or based upon this status update, I would like to cancel this job, or whatever. Um, it would be nice, well, I, I need to have more components um, to do my um, aggregation of log messages, uh, or aggregation of message queue things, etc. Um, I want need more and better stock JavaScript. Uh, I mean, everything that I just demoed um, is shipped with the, the distribution, um, so you know, if you can write some sensible HTML uh, to make it look less fugly, you, you can have my progress update bars. Um, I'm, I'm fairly easy to change. I mean, again, it's already in juice, which is the most port of JavaScript, so, so changing it is pretty easy. Um, um, what to go look at? Um, well, if you're interested um, in this queuing our name, keep it all, look for our MQ site, um, look at SlideShare. There are a load of much better presentations than this about how AMQP and Rabbit works. Um, Okay, CPAN stuff. Um, NetRabbitFoot is the actual client library for talking to RabbitMQ. Um, add rabbit tail is a little thing that I wrote, um, which just tails a log file. I, I literally like the Unix tail command, uh, but every line gets sent to the message queuing. Um, a little um, utility that I was <coughs> using before to display stuff across the message queuing. Um, that should be on CPAN in the next few days. Um, so there's going to be an app rabbit tail, which tails files into message queuing, and an app tail rabbit, which gets things from message queuing and writes them out to files, or console, or growl updates, or, or yeah, I've, I've written those so far, or ideas are good. Um, Plaque um, and web hippie, uh, kind of a base <coughs> technology for this. Uh, it happens to be a catalyst application, but none of this worked at all um, on less. It was kind of hippie and all the asynchronous stuff. Um, and if you want to look at the distribution itself and my code, it's hook up the space job server. Um, it's on GitHub. Um, I will be putting it in <coughs> shortly, um, but I haven't quite got there yet. Um, okay, so there are other solutions. I've mentioned about five times now. Um, if you want something really stupidly simple, then then game out's probably the choice. Um, but you don't get any of the nice shiny that I just showed you. Um, you can use Stomp. Um, it kind of works well. Um, there's a kind of very similar catalyst based managing your message stream thing, um, which I might have also been involved in writing. Um, you're going to use ActiveMQ, uh, and so I guess you basically get to pick um, Apache's hor uh, sorry, Java's beautiful stack traces, or Erlang's beautiful stack traces. Um, yeah. Um, Radical Lazy has stop adapter. Good fucking look getting that working. Because uh, it's done. Uh, thanks. Does anyone have any questions? Um, uh, and if you're interested in playing Grammy Art, see it on GitHub. Uh, yell at me. I, I will hold your hand to getting it working for you. Go, Nick. This is actually a digression question. Of course it is. You're asking it. Yeah. This is, <laughs> you're con so you're splatting JSON, I assume, objects. Are, are, yeah. But your config files are in YAML. Why yes. that? Um, <laughs> okay, uh, that's an answer. <laughs> no, hysterical reasons from company, basically. Okay. <coughs> all, all of the pre existing stuff had config in YAML, uh, and therefore all of the things that I've written to be deployed at my day job. Um, and I, I wrote this in my, my kind of spare time because I wanted to play with something. Right. But I also, I, I would never have got it this far if it was just for playing with, so I was like, I would deploy at work. Which is why the copy ended up as YAML, just because that happens to fit in, and it's there are bigger wars to fight. Okay, but well, the other ones are the discovery. YAML you can pretty much edit it by hand, JSON you can't, mm. and your version control systems are great because JSON doesn't allow you a trailing comma at the end of a list. It's actually it's probably possible for an automatic merge to use invalid JSON. Yeah, <laughs> it's got gotchas. Any <laughs> bumpy step left? The advantage of JSON in the synchronous framework like this. You can actually tell when the JSON object is finished. It's very hard to actually spot a truncated JAML object when you're doing the same program. I didn't know that. Thank you. 
presumably the merge problem you could solve by putting the commas at the start of the line. I'm thinking that one, that's why I laugh. Because someone wrote Perl with a semicolon at the start of every line. And it was their style and they were consistent. Yeah. And they thought it was the only way you could possibly do it. Yes. That's an idea for a conference freebie, a sick bag with your logo on it. <laughs> server has a little clue in it uh, that if it sees um, an object that type one job going past, um, then it yanks the UUID out and subscribes it. Yeah, it's done on the server side. Right. Um, because um, A, that is easier, and B, allowing my JavaScript to subscribe to arbitrary routing keys kind of scale. Uh, because you know, I'm scrapping lots of stuff in the next um, so, so I'm not to make any messages from the uh, new doctor. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, and maybe is the answer. Uh, I mean, you know, you should get the subscription notification and subscribe before the job has, has gone through and started running. Uh, but it probably is a race condition there. Uh, so I will very quickly there we go. Uh, very, very quickly. No, I won't. I can't uh, I know that some of anyway. responds very well to beer in hand if you'd like to know more about this. Yeah, for all being poked on IRC uh, mm -hmm. to go, how the bloody hell do I get this crap working? Um, I am also very confident. But I'm also just heckling on Thank Martin for helping provide the beer. Sorry? <laughs> Thank you. He's doing some of the beer. It's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> 